Testing, testing, you guys there? What's up guys? So I got another quick one for the channel. We're gonna be kicking off a series. You guys uh, ever up late night channel surfing or flipping through the Instagram feed or Facebook, whatever, whatever advertising on Facebook, you guys catch those as seen on TV tools. Well, we're gonna be putting those tools to the test. I got a couple of them here, got a couple on order, but I shot some clips of some of these tools the other day. We're gonna put them in here, see what you guys think, see if these things are worth picking up right away, running out, or taking a pass on. Checking out, see if they're a must or a bust. So let me know what you guys think of this idea for the channel. Uh, roll these clips. Video guy, roll the clip. Oh, that's me. All right guys, so here's the first one we're gonna be testing here. We got the Speed Out one. It's still in the package here now. I'm getting ready to open it up. It says, uh, removes any strip screw in 10 seconds or less. And it looks like it comes with four different sizes. The bit flip bits, looks like one size to drill out and then the other sides to extract it. it says works with any drill removes any screw or bolt Phillips flathead hex painted and more durable heated uh, durable hardened steel construction quick and easy to use and then it's got the steps in the back so what we're gonna do get this bad boy opened up I got this truck I'm working on here want to put in some uh, reverse light bulbs the outside screws came out no problem but the inside screws are pretty rusty you look like I got screwdriver on it and it won't budge it's actually starting to strip it and you can see it's even when you push on it it's just spinning on there so they're already starting to strip <clears throat> we're gonna go ahead and uh, crack this package open and see if uh, see if these things work get you guys set up and get this thing opened I'm gonna try to do this without getting in the camera shot it's got the clamshell packing in there looks like it comes with a, a neat little suitcase that you could kind of close up and toss in the drawer if it's any good if not I'll be tossing it in the garbage so I think we're going to start off with the smallest one here. Number one, that's how they uh, size these, maybe. Yeah, we'll start off with a number one first. So first step, get it in the drill. Let's drill out this top one. Flip it. Let's see if this sticks it out. Wah, wah, wah. Maybe we'll try the next size. And actually, you know what I'll do? Let me get an extension for the drill. So it looks like you can't really use extensions with these um, the way they're set up. You can't get them inside a drill extension. You got a couple different kinds here. It won't catch because it's a double sided. This side does, but you'll probably end up just breaking it, and plus it doesn't sit in there straight. So, I'll try to see if we can get on this a little straighter with the bigger one here. Maybe if I barely. 
if I barely grab it and have it sticking out as much as possible. First we'll drill it out. So I guess in this scenario, you can see now I really did it in. I'll probably have to just cut this one or grind it out. Um, but in this scenario, since I can't get on it straight enough with the truck bed in the way, it's not able to work. So I'll have to test these out on uh, something straight. Maybe we'll go over to the bench and... Uh, strip a bolt out or something like that and see if it grabs a hold of it we'll put it in some wood or something but so far especially when you're uh, tight on space and you got to get a drill down in there you know not being able to put this on an extension or make it longer you know you'll have to be right on top of it like something like that so, that's the as seen on TV speed out so I figure I turn this one into a, a quick tip too, guys. So if you ever have that issue, you got a rusted stripped out, you know, and you, obviously we drilled out the Phillips, so there was no chance we were gonna get a Phillips anymore because the speed out wants you to drill it out. What you do is just take a uh, normal cutting wheel and uh, turn it into a flathead. And now, with a nice little flathead on here, and getting it to turn. So that takes care of this one. Quick tip on that. Works on the uh, the rotor fasteners, holding on the rotors and all that stuff. You know, instead of cutting them out, turn them into a Phillips. That way you could save the threads. Just a quick tip. All right, guys. So I got this next one. Uh, I'm sure you guys seen these before. This one's uh, it's the solderless butt connectors for uh, wiring. It's supposed to be quicker than uh, you know just normal soldering. It's basically got, it's a solder connector, it's got a shrink tube, a seal, and a little piece of solder all built into one. I, I got a little kit here. This, uh, I got this from a company called uh, Sopobuy. I'll leave, a, I'll leave an Amazon link in the description. This is just one of the mini kits. I figured I'd give them a try a few weeks back. I've been using them. They seem decent. But what I got, I got a little uh, testing rig here set up. I got... What we're gonna do is we're gonna, I got two identical pieces of wire. We're gonna cut them down, throw them in the vise real quick. I'm gonna get the, the soldering gun fired up and we're gonna time it. I'm gonna do, first I'm gonna do, connect it with one of these, the solderless connectors, and then use a heat gun to shrink it to see how long it takes. We're gonna time it and then we're gonna do a test pull on it. And then I'm gonna solder the same piece of wire the normal way and see how long that takes and see how strong that is we'll test them so get you guys set up first we're going to do we're going to do this one we're going to we're going to do it with the uh you could use either or you could use a heat gun or a torch obviously a heat gun is going to be probably slower uh, i got my little cheap heat gun here but we're going to try it with this and then while that's heating up we're going to use the butt connectors so let's get set up all right guys so i'm going to get this we get this one kicked on and heated up. Let's get the first one in there. Just use the vise to hold the wire. Cut it about in half. And I got my little uh, wire cutters. Cut it back a bit. the blue one. I'll use the yeah the blue one. That's 
probably for 14 to 16 gauge. And then basically what they say to do is just uh, set them up. Let's put it through this way. Set them up side by side like that and then pull it over. So they're sitting next to each other right over the solder kind of like that right in the middle let's heat this up seems like it's taking a while there the solder starting to melt now and then you got to make sure that you give it time to dry, to, to cool off. Give it some time to cool off. I personally like using the torch better. Let that cool off. And I mean it pulled right out. Alright, we got it set up. I'm going to run it through here. They say just have them side by side. That's all it takes. You don't even have to twist them together. But you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to twist them together anyways. Give it a uh, good contact. There we go. Right in the middle. Now just heat it up. I'm trying to stay focused more on that little piece of solder inside there. Make sure that starts to melt. Seems like it's melting the plastic more than the solder. Maybe we'll have to do it again and use the torch. I can't tell if it's melting or not. We'll do that. It's completely sealed. Let it cool off. We'll give it a tug test and see. Pull on it, see if it holds. Let that cool off. Let's set up this other one for just the regular solder. We got. Let's cut it back. I like to use just dikes to cut it, and then switch over to these. These are great little pliers, wire cutters. I see that part number. PWCS9CF. Great players. Wire cutters. All right, cut that back. Now, obviously, with solder. Get a shrink tube handy. A little bit bigger one here. What I like to do is just kind of fan it out like that. And then I'll connect them like that, vertical, and then just twist them together. All right, this should be nice and warmed up. Let's just do some normal solder on here. Make sure it's all the way around. Use a heat pump for this one too. Done. Alright, we'll give these a pull test now. So these were both done in real time, 
You can see how long it took me to do this one. It seems nice and hard. Definitely seems sealed. And then the normal way, still a little warm. We'll give these a pull test. That ain't going anywhere. Give this one a pull test. Pulls right out. So, as far as durability, obviously for time saving, you know, if you just got to make something connect, you know, that's great, but, you know, stuff doesn't hold up. So what I'm going to do, ow, is I'm going to cut this back, and we're going to try again with the torch this time. So we'll get some fresh wire exposed here. So we're going to try it with the torch this time. And then I'm going to do the same thing with this one. I'm going to try to fan it out like how I normally do, normally soldering it. And then just cross them. Give it a good twist this time. Even though they say just to put them side by side and that's supposed to work. But here's my blue one. Slide that up in there. We're going to use the torch this time and make sure we melt that solder real good. I'm going to try to stay focused on the middle first without it start catching on fire and then do the outside. I can see it kind of burned through. Solder starting to come through a little bit. Let's we'll see if that was enough. Let that cool off, we'll give it a tug test. Alright guys, so it's been a couple minutes. It's nice and cooled off. Now with the torch, give it a pull test. And I can already feel it making noise. It's a lot better using the torch than the heat gun. It heats it up faster. But, I mean, it still pulls out. So... Alright guys, so I don't know if at this point I'm doing something wrong, maybe, you know, not heating up the connector enough, um, or maybe I got a bad batch, or there's a couple manufacturers that make these, maybe I didn't pick the right one, but they all look the same to me. Um, you know, as far as continuity, I got continuity through the wire, I got my multimeter right here, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to do it the side-by-side -side way, because that's the way I see in the advertising. So I'm going to get them twist up decent, and then we're going to do them side by side here. We're going to use the torch, because it seemed, the torch seemed to heat it up a little better. But I'm going to try to turn the torch on a lower, lower flame. So maybe halfway, even lower. We got a super, I don't know if you guys are catching that flame, super low, and we're just going to try to evenly disperse it. That way we don't melt the plastic. Just try to melt that solder on there. All the way around. And I can tell, okay, it's starting to shrink now. Alright, it's getting too hot. Maybe switch over to the heat gun on low. Alright, I start to see the solder melting around the wire, so we'll let that sit. And then we'll do a quick continuity test through the wire, and we'll compare it to the normal solder. Then we'll do a pull test. Alright guys, so it's been about five minutes. I'm going to let it cool a little longer. I cleaned up a little bit, but I'm going to cut these back a bit so we can check continuity on it. Make sure it is, it's at least a clean connection all the way through. I know it's a smaller wire, but let's see. Got my little Maco uh, MD251 here, multimeter. Set it to ohms. Yeah, I mean, I got good continuity here. Put it back in there. I'm going to tug on it in a minute. It's not that I have to test 
the normal solder one, but test continuity on this one too. Make sure we're all the way at zero. We're good on that one too. Zero. All right, so let's give this one a tug test now. You guys can see it right here. I mean, I'm not sure if these are worth the packing to put in. Oh, you guys are back. So that was these two put to the test. The speed out. Uh, we might have to revisit the speed out in the future to see if. Uh, you know, I was doing it wrong. I'd, I'd like to get, you know, real life case scenarios on it and not, you know, something that you're kind of bench testing and setting up for. Uh, maybe one of those stuck rotor fasteners or something. If I get a stripped out one, we'll revisit this one. But, you know, hey, kind of wasn't impressed. Let me know if I'm doing it wrong down in the comments, guys. You know, same goes for this. Um, pretty cool idea. I'm sure the guy who invented this stuff is making money. Uh, you know, for those quick aftermarket radios or something tucked behind the dash, you know, I'll use them, three, four, five of them. Other than that, anything aftermarket, but anything under hood or, you know, stressed on, obviously you guys can see the wire can't withstand any kind of pulling or anything like that. So, and I, I wonder how susceptible they are to corrosion in the future. So that was that, those two guys. I got it, like I said, I got a couple more coming. I got a couple more here videos I'm gonna be shooting real soon. Let me know what you guys think of this video idea. If you guys got any tools in mind that you want me to check out, you haven't seen today or in any other videos, leave down in the comments. As always guys, like, comment, subscribe if you haven't already to the channel. Check me out on Instagram at CasperTech54. We'll catch you guys in the next one. Signing out.